coming up on today's show. After nearly a decade in the history books, Aptera returns from the dead and promises its range-topping model will do 1,000 miles, 1,600 kilometers per charge, and cost less than a Tesla Model Y, GridServe transforms the UK EV charging experience forever with its first electric forecourt, and not one but two companies promise solid-state battery breakthroughs, although some of the claims are being met with severe scepticism from many. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another episode of TEN, Transport Evolved News. We are now officially into the tail end of the year and I'm sure you're as just as keen as I to get rid of 2020. So let's get on with it. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Join them and help the switch from fossil fuels to electric today by heading to electricauto.org. It's back nearly a decade after the original company that created it crashed and burned, partly due to its management at the time, a team who caused the original founders to leave, Aptera is back. And this time, the company and its original founders are promising more than they could possibly have offered a decade ago. The hyper-aerodynamic three-wheeler may look pretty similar to the original Aptera, but under the hood, there's been a slew of changes to its design, incorporating the latest in lithium-ion battery technology, new in-wheel motors, and an onboard solar panel system that the company claims can add up to 40 miles, 64 kilometers of range, in in ideal situations every day. Aptera is now taking $100 reservations and, full disclaimer, I've put down money for one. However, I still believe that the jury is out on if it will actually make it to production or not. If you want a deeper dive into the Aptera, there's a video on the channel that does exactly that. For those with farms or small holdings, a tractor is an essential piece of work equipment, but traditionally these have been powered by internal combustion engines. This week, tractor startup Monarch revealed the all-electric autonomous capable Monarch tractor. Smaller than the mega tractors you might see working the fields of the Great Plains, the Monarch is more than capable of carrying out duties along narrow tracks of vineyards or orchards. It's fitted out, as most tractors are, with a three-point hitch, power takeoff, and all-wheel drive. It even has an onboard power inverter and can handle all of the usual implements a tractor of that size would be expected to. But it's party trick, full autonomous capability in the fields controlled either by a smartphone app or even human gesture. It can, says its creators, save up to $45 a day over a comparable ice tractor. Ahead of its debut onto the S&P 500 later this month, Tesla's stock has continued to rise and is now quite comfortably sitting in the $600 range. So it came as no surprise this week that Tesla is planning on taking full advantage of this by issuing up to $5 billion worth of extra stock at an at-the-market capital raise. According to official documentation filed with the SEC announcing the capital raise, Tesla says it plans to use any funds it gets from that new stock to, quote, further strengthen our balance sheet, as well as for general corporate purposes. Given Tesla is currently full steam ahead with building its Gigafactory in Texas, expanding Giga Shanghai, and finishing Giga Berlin, I think that extra money will most certainly be useful. Frankly, the only people who won't like it are Tesla shorts, who continue to get burned. Volkswagen has confirmed that it's begun production preparations for the ID6, the fifth ID-badged electric car from the company. Debuted as the ID Vision concept last year, pre-production ID6 prototypes have already been spotted on the road and, according to Volkswagen's head of research and development, will debut in the final quarter of 2023. Right now, we don't have official range figures, but it's expected to offer a real-world capability approaching 400 miles or 643 kilometers from a beefy battery pack, likely to cross shop against the BMW i4 and Mercedes-Benz EQE, two models which also have to yet to launch. The ID6 is also rumored to be getting a GTX performance variant. It will be offered in both a sedan and a state, or station wagon, version. 
Earlier this year, we told you about the Lincoln Co Zero Concept, an all-electric vehicle from Chinese luxury brand Lincoln Co, a brand which happens to be owned by Geely Automotive. And if you remember, we told you that the Zero Concept shared its underpinnings with the Polestar 2 and Volvo XC40 Recharge, and thus a path to market might be pretty easy. Well, that's exactly now what we're seeing with Lincoln Co teasing the first video of a pre-production Zero EV out on the track testing. The company is the latest in a long line of Chinese companies with its sights set on the rest of the world. But unlike most Chinese automakers, it does have a head up in terms of the shared platform with sister companies Polestar and Volvo. We don't know any production plans yet, but of course when I have them, I'll share. While charging infrastructure for electric vehicles is far more common than it once was, the locations that some charging sites are at are less than desirable. In fact, perhaps not even that safe. But in the UK, that may soon be a thing of the past thanks to GridServe and its EV filling stations. The first one has just opened in Braintree, Essex, and it offers every type of quick charging currently on the market, features solar panels on the roof to make its own electricity, and even has a place for refreshments and the obligatory bathroom break. It is, frankly, a breath of fresh air. Of course, in mainland Europe, similar sites have existed for a while thanks to Fastned and others. But this is the first one in the UK, so here's to many, many more, and I hope other charging providers take note. As promised earlier this year, Volvo trucks have now officially opened the order books in North America for its first mass-produced electric big rig, the Volvo VNR Electric. It was in limited production this year and tested in various ports in California. But now the electric big rig will be made in the US at Volvo Trucks production facility in Virginia. Unless I'm wrong, please tell me if I am, the VNR Electric is the first electric big rig to go on sale in the US that will be available to any commercial buyer who wishes to own one. Because while the Tesla Semi is already being tested by Tesla and the Freightliner E Cascadia is already on the road in select test fleets, I believe the VNR Electric won't have any limitations on who can buy them and where they need to be to get one. It'll cost more to buy initially than a diesel big rig but should save some significant money over the truck's lifetime. Solid-state batteries have always been seen as a holy grail of the EV world, and this week we got two different companies presenting their latest improvements in said technology. The first was California startup QuantumScape, which hosted an online presentation this week in which it says it solved some of the traditional problems with solid-state battery packs, namely their lifespan, temperature operation and charging capabilities. QuantumScape says it's going to take several years before it's anywhere near production ready though, and this has caused some in the industry to call QuantumScape's claims fake, stating that it spent 10 years researching batteries and still has hasn't got a commercial version. However, as Elon Musk himself noted during Tesla's battery day, it sometimes takes a long time to find the right chemistry and the right solution, and it takes even longer to go from lab to commercial reality. We did a video on QuantumScape this week, so do check it out later. The second solid-state breakthrough this week comes courtesy of Solid Power, a Colorado startup which announced that it's successfully begun high-throughput roll-to-roll solid-state battery production. Having migrated from single-cell production, which is where QuantumScape currently is, Solid Power says it's now building larger 22-layer cells for validation purposes. These cells are capable of storing 330 watt-hours of energy per kilogram, and they will undergo thorough, rigorous testing over the coming months. This is ahead of the production of even larger form factor cells. Solid Power says that it aims to be ready to produce automotive grade cells by 2022, which is when it hopes to begin formal automotive qualification. That, I assume, means testing with automakers to see if these cells have what it takes to withstand life in an EV. And now it's time for short shorts. Sono Motors, the crowd-funded European startup seeking to make electric vehicles both more affordable and versatile for everyone, has announced that it will reveal its latest prototype vehicle at CES 2021. Because of COVID, that reveal will be held virtually. 
Bollinger has also updated its vehicle designs this week, teasing photographs of its new production intent vehicles. It's got a higher waistline than the pre-production prototypes and says Bollinger should be entering into production in the not too distant future. Audi has officially finished pre-production validation of its upcoming e-tron GT and has switched to making production vehicles ahead of the vehicle's official launch. We're going to get an official reveal of the production vehicle early next year. GMC published the first official video of this week of its all-electric Hummer pickup undergoing formal winter testing ahead of the start of production late next year. Given General Motors was slated for not having a functional prototype at the time of its reveal event, this video is pretty good to see. Talking of testing, BMW has teased more images of its upcoming iX crossover, undergoing final rounds of winter testing before it launches next year. It's due to enter into production and BMW, as usual, has provided lots of photos to look at. The Nikkei reported this week that Toyota is readying itself to unveil a new electric car early next year, but rather than be fitted with a regular lithium-ion battery pack, it is expected the vehicle will have a solid-state battery capable of charging in just 10 minutes. When we know more, we'll share. Hyundai has published more teasers of the upcoming Ionic 5 crossover this week, showcasing a short video ahead of the car's official debut next year. But unlike most teaser videos, the Ionic 5 doesn't actually feature in this one, and frankly, that's a bit weird. Tesla has officially launched a brand new leasing experience for customers to use. It allows customers to manage their leases through their Tesla account and includes options like extending or transferring leases, deciding to purchase the car or selling the car. It will debut early next year. Lordstown Motors has published another short video this week, but rather than the previous ones we've seen, shows an alpha prototype Lordstown Endurance, with no body on top, going off-road to prove its capabilities. It does show, though, that Lordstown has a significant way to go before being ready for series production. Tesla has officially published its first inclusion report, documenting how it's doing when it comes to diversity in the workplace. While it does show some good inclusion programs and a reasonably diverse workforce, that diversity isn't well represented at higher levels of management. The Boring Company, having just about completed things in Las Vegas, has published a teaser video of, quote, a rave inside one of the Las Vegas Convention Center tunnels it's built. Honestly, I am super excited to try this out post-COVID whenever I'm back in Las Vegas. Tesla has officially begun testing its full self-driving software in Phoenix, Arizona, but before you tell me it's already in beta, we're talking about internal testing of new software long before it reaches Tesla's public test fleet. Opel executives expressed astonishment this week that the Opel eMocha electric car sold out long before its launch. It's not clear if the company will be upping its production plans or not, but the price and the specs of the eMocha is not really a surprise that it's proving so popular. Also proving popular in Europe is Renault, which is now dominating not just the electric car market, but also the electric van market too. Renault says more than 84,000 Renault Zoes have been sold alone this year, while the Kangoo ZE currently accounts for one third of all European commercial electric van sales. The state of California's Energy Commission has approved an investment of up to $115 million to increase the number of hydrogen fuel filling stations in the state. This is to essentially speed up infrastructure deployment, which is currently well behind planned schedule. A total of 180 Irish telephone boxes are due to be replaced with DC rapid charging stations in the near future, thanks to a partnership between Irish telecoms company R and EV charging network EasyGo. Volkswagen has announced a new pilot project which will use a 22 kilowatt capable two-way charging station to allow two-way power transfer between its ID vehicles and the power grid. If successful, it might become a future option for customers to order. Audi's Artemis Task Force, which was charged with developing autonomous electric vehicles, has now been spun off from Audi and is its own company, separate and distinct from the parent. It's not clear why this separation happened, however. 
Atlas has officially priced its pickup truck ahead of launch. The base model will start from $45,000 US dollars, but as our recent interview with Mark Hanschett shows, there is still a long way for the company to go before the truck is ready for production. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. As it edges ever closer to full-scale production, Rivian has announced details of its own charging network for use by its customers. Like Tesla, it plans its own charging network, but rather than be focused on intercity travel, it appears Rivian is going to focus on installing high-power charging stations at locations that might be frequented by those who own an adventure truck, like places known for hiking, camping, other outdoor sports, or perhaps even skiing. But rather than being exclusively Rivian owned and operated, it does look like Rivian may partner with other charging networks too, because the R1T and R1S use CCS as their charging connector of choice. It's a smart hybrid approach to rapid charging networks that ensures that Rivian customers can get a charge even when they're miles from the nearest town, but should cost a lot less to deploy than Tesla's more comprehensive nationwide approach. And finally, vehicle-to-grid technology is awesome. At least, I think it is, because it allows you to use your electric car as a backup power solution in an emergency. But honestly, right now, unless you happen to live somewhere where V2G is common, you probably don't have access to it. And because V2G is generally only currently offered with Chidemo cars, your access is probably even more restricted. But what if I told you that it was possible to use a portable, custom V2G solution using CCS to power a mini pizza oven and cook a pizza roadside using an electric motorcycle? Well, that's exactly what Brandon Miller and Morgan Veta from DigiNow did earlier this year, using an EV siphon to show it's actually possible. It is still a prototype CCS unit, but it does show the possibilities lie ahead. There's no commercial variant right now, but I do really hope these guys get some financial backing to make this a reality. I'd love to have VGG with CCS. What about you? Plus, who doesn't like pizza? And on that note, we're done for today. But before I go, I'd like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, find local monthly meetups to attend, virtually at the moment of course, or find EV owners you can talk about to making your own switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. Myself and the rest of the team would really love it if you'd comment and subscribe to the channel, as well as considering supporting us using one of the links below. There's also a link to our Discord chat room, which is great fun and free to join, so please do give it a look. And you should also check out our Redbubble TE merch store. We have some great designs that I think you'll like. We're back to our usual December production schedule, so there's going to be an episode next week, and then we'll take a couple of weeks off for the new year and Christmas. Until then, please stay safe, wear a mask, and keep yourself and your loved ones safe. And if you do have to travel any time, whether it's following CDC guidance or whatever is local in your country, please make sure that you don't travel unless it's absolutely necessary. We need to stop COVID, even though there are vaccines now on the way. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving.